For my whole life, I've been sort of known as a foodie. Uh, like most people, I enjoy eating. From time to time, when I was a little kid, I was accused of hoarding all the food for myself. If we had pizza, I'd pile all the slices of pizza on my plate to make sure that no one ate the food that I thought I needed. Or if we made some guacamole, I'd scoop half the bowl out onto my one taco. Uh, to be honest, I kind of do that even today. Uh, if our family's all getting together, my mom separates a bunch of the guac in a different bowl for me, so I have enough. Uh, but I think it's partly because she knows I'm going to eat everyone else's if she doesn't do that. Today we're going to talk about the importance of food for proper growth. Not physical food, but spiritual food. In 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning in verse number 1, he writes, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. First of all, God's purpose for your life is that you grow spiritually. Peter says to lay aside the sin uh, and then to desire the word. And then he gives us a purpose clause. This is the reason we're to do that. He says that you may grow thereby. God intends for you to grow. One evening, a man came to Jesus, a man by the name of Nicodemus, and he was wanting to know more about the Lord. And Jesus told him how to be saved. He said, you must be born again. Now, Jesus wasn't talking about physical birth. He was talking about spiritual birth. You see, when a person places their faith in Christ, they're born spiritually, which means they become a spiritual baby. And a spiritual baby, just like a physical baby, is designed to grow. Now, Kelsey and I have four kids. We have a place in our hallway at our house where we measure each one of them on their birthday each year to see how much they've grown. And we have to really watch them because they try to cheat and they kind of get on their tippy toes uh, to be measured taller than what they actually are because they want to have grown. It's natural to grow. And if one of our kids ever stopped growing, we would take them to the doctor because it would be a sign that something was wrong with them. Let me ask you, are you growing as a Christian? If you stopped, there's something wrong. You're sick, you've got a spiritual tumor, so to speak, or you're malnourished, something is wrong. So the purpose is growth, we, we wanna grow. But Peter also tells us the process. We see that the spiritual growth process requires re removing sin and feeding on God's word. First, he says, remove the sin. He says, therefore, laying aside all the malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. He lists five different sins. Now, that's not exhaustive, but it is an example of the things that we need to remove in our life. He says, get rid of that sin and then desire the pure milk of the word. Now, the command here is desire the pure milk of the word. But Peter lets us know that we'll never properly hunger for God's word if our lives are filled with sin. You know, as a teenager, I remember rummaging through the kitchen constantly looking for food. When we would go to Oklahoma to visit my grandparents, my Mamie uh, would cook dessert with every meal while we visited there. And there always seemed to be some leftover brownies or some pie or something like that that was on the table throughout the day. And I remember uh, just being tempted constantly to go grab a bite. And I remember on many occasions her scolding me when I snuck a bite of a brownie. She would say, put that down. You'll You'll spoil your dinner. And it's true. If we eat a bunch of junk food, we're no longer hungry for the food uh, that, that's filled with nutrients. If you have a bunch of envy or malice in your life, it's going to spoil your appetite for God's Word. So first, lay that sin aside, then feast on God's Word. Now, he says here to desire the Word of God in the same way that a baby desires milk. Now, we had four little babies in our house, and I can tell you, when a baby's hungry for milk, nothing else will satisfy that baby. And that's supposed to be the same with us as Christians. So we see our purpose as Christians is to grow spiritually. Uh, we also see, though, that the process includes saying no to sin and yes to God's word. The last thing we see from this passage is that the condition of that growth is that we have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Growing spiritually begins by tasting of the grace of God. In verse number three, it says, if indeed, or since indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. You know, we do not grow by mere willpower. 
We don't grow by uh, telling ourselves to grow. We don't grow by striving to become better. We do not grow by our own merit. We grow once we've tasted of the grace of God. In fact, that's when spiritual life begins. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 1, uh, Paul writes, he says, And you he made alive who were dead in your trespasses and sins. Jesus says that we must be born again of his spirit. Paul described it as becoming a, a, a new creation. God desires that you grow in spiritual maturity, but growth requires life. No one that's dead grows. Nothing that's dead grows. And spiritual life is created when we recognize that we've sinned and that we can't possibly earn favor with God. We can't earn uh, our salvation without his grace. And at the moment that we place faith in Jesus, when we taste that the Lord is gracious, he brings new life into us. So a couple questions for you to ask yourself and the Lord as we wrap up. Number one, have you tasted the grace of God? You'll know it if you have because there's nothing else like it in all the world. It is so sweet. And if you haven't, you can by trusting Jesus. The second question is, if you have tasted God's grace, are you still growing? Or at some point along the way in your journey, did you stop growing? The way to grow for a Christian is by having a healthy spiritual diet. To say no to sin, to say no to the junk, and to say yes to God's word. When that happens, the natural process of spiritual maturity begins to form in your life.